Good Sunday morning and welcome into Weekend Recharge. I'm meteorologist Molly McCollum. And I'm meteorologist Lynette Charles. And America's Father's Day weekend depends on the weather. And where do we start? There's so much stuff going on. Well, I do want to start by wishing a very happy Father's Day to my dad oh. and my husband. Um, both fantastic dads. Yes, happy <laughs> Father's Day to all the fathers out there. But now we jump into yes. the weather because there is a lot going on. We want to slide and the family outside. The rest of the week, though, not as promising. All that tropical moisture that Lynette was just talking about, that's going to be streaming in. So really enjoy today. Take advantage of today. Let's start the clock on Monday, where we will see some showers streaming in. This is not too uncommon for Houston this time of year, right? But then we get to Tuesday, and that moisture gets more intense. It gets heavier. It gets more consistent throughout the day. By Tuesday evening, it is still raining in Galveston. It is still raining in Houston. Areas just north of Houston, like Conroe, over to Liberty, which have seen a lot of flooding as of late. I mean, we're talking, we're already saturated in southeastern Texas. This is an area that's been no stranger to rain as of late. So we put more moisture on top of saturated ground. I think flash flooding is going to happen very quickly. This is the European model, but we're seeing some big differences right now between the European model and the American model when it comes to the Houston area, Galveston, and the greater area around southeastern Texas. Now, if you were to believe the American model, we're talking over a foot of rain, and it does not take that much to flood in Houston. In fact, it's on. This is something that warrants monitoring very closely throughout the week and some planning as the week goes on. So you don't find yourself in a situation where you're stuck in an area that you know typically floods and you have no way to get out. Let's take you over to New Orleans and the Biloxi area where you're also anticipating tropical moisture moving in. And this is another area that is very flood prone. You can see flooding in New Orleans on just a typical afternoon thunderstorm, but this is not your typical afternoon thunderstorm. By Monday, we have rounds of moisture moving in. Tuesday, a a lot of this is directed more at the Texas area, and that leaves New Orleans on the drier side. But still, any kind of wobble in that forecast of bringing some more of the tropical moisture farther to the east, that would change things for you in New Orleans. And a forecast that you also need to monitor very closely. The American model and, of course, the European model, slight differences, but they're more in, in agreement for Louisiana than what we're talking about in Texas. Let's take you over to the Lake Charles area. Uh, any drive on the I-10 corridor for this upcoming week is going to be... A little stressful to say the least. We're talking, make sure your windshield wipers are, are in working order today because you will need them this week. This is Tuesday, 5 p.m., where we're looking at heavy rain across the Lake Charles area over towards Beaumont, Texas, and of course driving down towards the Houston area. That's where a majority of this tropical moisture is going to be streaming in, but we could very well see flooding in Lake Charles as well. Now, this is, once again, we're going to show you two different models because they're not quite in agreement. It's rain in Lake Charles, that's the uh, European model, but the American model says three to five inches of rain and any training of thunderstorms, Lynette, we know how this goes. Those amounts can easily go up. All right, Molly, thank you. Feeling the forecast in Misery Bay, Michigan. You might be sad if you had some outside plans, maybe in the UP of Michigan for Father's Day, but it's just hit or miss storms, so the whole day won't be a washout, and you can make some great core memories with Dad. Monday looks like a great day to stay inside, but if you're headed out, make sure you bring the rain gear. Meanwhile, in depressed Lake California, it is all about the sun and some very comfortable afternoons. Not much to be sad about when it comes to this forecast. And oh, look, I think there's sadness now. Sadness, isn't this a great couple of days in Depressed Lake? No, you're still feeling sad? That's all right. Sadness and Inside Out taught us that feeling sad is okay and acknowledging that is an important part of our well-being. After all, sadness was the hero of the first Inside Out. And sometimes if you're feeling sad, taking some time outside in nature can go a long way. And this is a beautiful area to do that. And this is an absolutely beautiful forecast. And you and the family can get in with all the feels and all the emotions at Inside Out 2 in theaters right now. <gasps> hey, Anger, ah! I, I wouldn't pull that. Oh, oh no. Clean up in Studio 9. The fire season is officially here. It is. Max Darrow from our CBS partner KPIX has a look at why fire departments are worried about this weekend. You know, we're still seeing, you know, across the middle of the nation, the tornadoes happening, but that trend is going down. So basically what you're seeing here in the yellow, the trend's going down and East of the Mississippi, the environment, the trend's going up. And the big trend when you see, you know, east of the Mississippi mm -hmm. is that a lot of these tornadoes are happening after dark. 
And that's a big problem. That is a big problem. Uh, let's talk about in terms of since 2010. So we look at uh, 2011. That was that big tornado outbreak. And so we're second to that this year. Just this year. Uh, exactly. Yeah, we're not done with this year. Yes, that's disturbing. It, it, it is. And the numbers keep climbing mm -hmm. in a lot of states like Texas. We, of course, a lot of that has to do with the size of the state of mm -hmm. Texas, why you have so many tornado reports. But it's also been an active year. But you go over towards Nebraska. We're close to 100 tornado reports. Places like Iowa in Missouri and over towards the Ohio Valley, it has been an incredibly devastating year for tornadoes and severe weather. Yeah, and you look at the records that we set in Ohio and also places like West Virginia. So it just goes to show you again how far north, how far east that it is going. These are the tornado reports for both April and May. You see how many of those dates of the month were either above average or even well above average. We saw way too many of those days. Exactly, and so now we're in June and we can see on the 5th of this month, that's when we've been dealing with the most of uh, those reports well above, but again, we still have a lot to go left. We do, and the pattern remains very active for many of these very same areas. Well, more weekend recharge is coming your way. Temperatures are that floods really easily. I mean, Houston can see flooding from just a few thunderstorms, and this is just not your run of the mill summer thunderstorms. Let's talk timing today. Two thumbs up in Houston. I mean, it's going to be hot, but it usually is in the summertime. And we could see a few scattered showers. Same deal for Monday, but Tuesday things start to change. We see more of that tropical moisture that's streaming in. Galveston, the I-10 corridor, Beaumont, even over to Lake Charles, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it doesn't stop throughout the day on Tuesday. So we're bringing in more moisture consistently. There's no time really for the ground and some of the drainage systems to recover. And we're putting more rain on top of that. And not to mention... It's saturated in southeastern Texas. I mean, think about all the flooding we had just a month ago in early May. We haven't had a lot of time to recover from that, and now we're putting more rain on top of that. Now, New Orleans, uh, the, both of the models are looking a little more optimistic for you as you're not going to see quite as much rain, but still warrants watching as we go throughout the week because if we see that tropical moisture start to shift back to the east, that would put New Orleans more in the zone for heavier rain, and we could easily see flooding in New Orleans just from a few training thunderstorms. Now, Lake Charles, you're in the middle of that, and you will likely see some heavier rain coming through starting on Monday evening evening, but even continuing throughout the day on Tuesday with a big focus of it being just to the south and just to the west of Lake Charles, but it'll continue to move in and, and put rounds of rain and it'll add up in, quitty, uh, in pretty quick order uh, for many of us in Lake Charles, but also Houston, southeastern Texas, Conroe, Liberty, many areas that have seen a lot of flooding as of late. Now down to the Corpus Christi area and Brownsville where it has been roasting hot as of late. We're going to see some showers, which of course will help cool us down, but most of the rain is going to be just to your north. This is very similar to what we were seeing in New Orleans where it warrants watching, also warrants watching in Mobile, but you're a lot further east to this tropical moisture than say in a place like New Orleans. And we are in a heat wave as we continue through the next several days. We're going to be dealing with excessive heat going on. And with that, we do have excessive heat watches. We do have heat advisories. This is around the Great Lakes, back off towards the Ohio Valley, and even portions of the Northeast as well. All courtesy of that area of high pressure that's just going to continue to get stronger before it's all said and done. You saw that jet stream well up to the north, allowing for more of that heat to really get up to the north. And we can see for today that high temperature in St. Louis. Good morning to you. You're going to be close to the century mark and we're going to feel though like we are in the triple digit. So this is where it gets really dangerous out there. We'll be dealing with this around Nashville temperatures in the mid to upper 90s, but once again feeling like we are in the triple digit. So if you have those outdoor activities, you might want to rethink the timing that you do them. And if you are going to be out and about, make sure you drink plenty of fluids and you try to seek shade as much as possible. I know a lot of people have to work outside so you don't have a choice and you know the drill. Drink up lots of fluids and that would be water mainly water. As we look at what's going to happen as we go into late week, there's that area of high pressure now sliding a little bit further on off towards the east, right? Again, strengthening, and then you can see that uh, jet stream a little bit further on off to the north as well. So we look at the population that's going to be above 90 degrees. So not even, um, you know, just hot. We're talking about above 90 or setting records. Above 90 for your tomorrow, about 140 million. As we head into Wednesday, about 150 million. And then by Friday, 
It even goes up close to 200 million people above average. But not only does it go up, it's in areas where, you know, we haven't seen it in a while and in areas where they don't necessarily, not everybody has AC. So as we head into your Wednesday, we're still in the 90s in a lot of spots and we can see what's happening up towards Burlington. Look at that 94 degrees. Remember, we will be dealing with that humidity, making it feel a lot hotter out there. And because of that, when you have the high temperatures and you do have the high humidity, we have that heat risk and that is going to be on the extreme side. Look at this, all those purples there. That is again dangerous. So just to recap, make sure you stay hydrated and in a cool place. And we also consider strongly consider uh, canceling those outdoor plans. Molly. Well.